Let's talk about your audio interface and what exactly it does. Your audio interface consists of inputs which get real world sound, like your voice or a guitar for example, into your computer and outputs which get sound out of your computer and into your speakers or headphones. Firstly, there is the connection to connect the interface to the computer, which will either be Firewire, USB or Thunderbolt. Make sure that this is plugged in and that your interface is switched on. It may also need its own power, so make sure that this is also connected. Your interface's audio inputs will look something like this. This is where you plug a microphone cable or a guitar cable. Your inputs will likely be on the front of the interface and they'll probably have a number next to them. Next to each input, there will be a knob labelled Gain. The Gain knob controls the preamp, which amplifies the very, very soft electrical signal that comes from a microphone or instrument. There may be a button labelled Inst. The Inst button is basically designed to make instruments with pickups, such as electric guitars, sound better. So press the Inst button if you're plugging in a guitar, for example. For musicians who play live, Think of the INST button as turning your input into a DI box. The PAD button lowers the input volume by a large preset amount and therefore makes the input sound quieter. Think of the PAD as being a way to drastically lower the volume of a loud signal. Sometimes if you have a very loud signal coming off your microphone, for example a loud acoustic instrument like a drum kit, you can use the PAD switch. There will be a button labelled 48V which stands for 48 volts. This is also known as phantom power, and it makes condenser microphones work properly by sending an electrical current to the microphone. We'll talk more about microphones in lesson 2.2. Never plug or unplug a microphone from an input that has phantom power on. Never turn on phantom power if the gain dial is not set to zero. Not doing this will damage your microphone. Some interfaces will only have one 48V switch for several or all of the inputs. Phantom power does not affect dynamic microphone inputs or instrument inputs, but it's always better to make sure that it's switched off when plugging or unplugging both condenser and dynamic microphones. On your interface, you'll sometimes also see some lights that might be labelled with negative ascending numbers. This is a meter which shows how loud the signal coming from your input is. The zero light, sometimes called clip, is usually red, but should never be lit up when inputting audio or recording for live processing. When it does light up, what is called clipping occurs, when the signal is overloading the analog and or the digital signal inputs, and this clipping creates distortion. If the signal is clipping and the red light comes on, you need to turn the gain down. When you turn the phantom power on, you might notice the meters will peak. This is normal. This shows that the interface has sent electricity to the microphone and it's now ready to go. Again, make sure the gain is set to zero. Some interfaces do everything I've mentioned here with software. So you use software to change the gain, turn on the pad or phantom power and so on, without any hardware buttons to do the switching. This makes for a sleeker looking interface, but it means you have another piece of software to learn which you'll need to rely on for these knobs or these kinds of common controls. So bear that in mind when choosing your interface. Now let's briefly talk about outputs. You'll find a range of different output options, as diverse as there are interfaces themselves, but most will have a dedicated output 1-2, and output 1-2 will also usually be mirrored to the headphone output. This means that whatever audio signal is going to output 1-2 on your interface will also be outputting through the headphones. There should be at least two TRS or quarter inch jack outputs usually on the back of your interface, and they usually use output 1 for the left channel and output 2 for the right channel by default. Your headphone output will usually be a single quarter inch jack output which will carry a stereo signal, usually both channel 1 and channel 2 by default. Now that you know your audio interface, we can start using it with Ableton Live. There are only a few steps to get Ableton Live ready to receive your sound input.